My first experience with this car was in the early 70s. I was in the Cub Scouts, and our Cub Scout master took us to the museum that used to be in the old student building at IU. And this car was on display there. And I remember we all gathered around it. That's a car? You know, somebody actually went somewhere with that? It always fascinated me because it was the first car in Bloomington. At that time, I had no idea how on earth the thing could possibly work and what did it actually do? What am I looking at? This car, the first car to drive the streets of Bloomington in 1897, was built by jeweler and real estate mogul J.O. Howe. Howe, also an engineer for Bloomington's all-volunteer fire department, was mechanically inclined, a tinkerer by nature. But how and why that translates into building a car from scratch is anybody's guess. We did travel quite a bit. And one of the family reminiscences said that he had traveled out east, he'd seen some of the new horseless carriages, we don't know what he saw, he made some sketches, came home and, and started building. And on June 25th, 1897, about eight months after construction began, how tested his car for the first time. The newspaper claimed it worked surprisingly well because he drove it from his store on the west side of the square all the way to Second Street, going down College Avenue. We've never gotten this one to go more than maybe 100 feet before there's some kind of major failure. So we're kind of in awe that that first trip, of course, he was going a little bit downhill. I was going to say, we haven't tried it on our downhill yet. Yeah. Maybe we should per perhaps go that direction. Yeah, and there's a little too much traffic to, <laughs> to actually duplicate his route right now. That's right, a duplicate. Because a few years ago, more than a century after Howe's trip south from the square, and nearly a half century after a young Cub Scout first laid eyes on this mesmerizing machine, Carl received a challenge from the director of Bloomington's Stone Age Institute. Nick Toth, he said to me, what do you think it would take to get this car running again? And I said, well, you won't even let us touch it without white gloves. That's impossible. But it might be kind of fun to build a replica. Almost immediately, Carl brought in friend, colleague, and fellow car buff Ronan Young. And together, they began to research what it might take. It's just a little carriage. How hard can it be? It's just a few parts. It's an engine and a frame and a little drivetrain. It can't be any big deal. And uh, it snowballed from there. It snowballed, in part because Carl and Ronan wanted their car to be as close a match to Howe's as possible. We wanted an exact replica because we wanted to see really what the original car was. What could it do? What did it sound like? What did it run like? And we wanted to make an absolutely exact copy that we could play with. You have to remember that nobody alive had ever heard that original car run. We probably made it a bigger deal than we needed to because we decided to do everything from scratch. Flywheels were cast at Salisbury's Sculpture Trails foundry. Frame members were sourced from centuries-old oak beams and rough parts were fine-tuned by machinist Dennis Maddox. The simple, very simple engine has approximately 150 parts. We had to make every single one of those, every nut, bolt, and screw on that engine. And after countless hours of work, the Howe car, version 2.0, was ready for its own first drive. The end of September of 2016, we had the car in its near final configuration. We had it pushed out and we were ready to try and run it and we had been pulling on it for hours, it felt like. And it would pop here and there. It would occasionally pop, but when it would pop, we'd get excited because now we knew something was gonna happen. We were going to make this run. If we could get it to pop, we knew we could get it to run. And then it popped, it ran a couple of revolutions, and it backfired and broke the crankshaft. Two weeks from our uh, big uh, yeah. debut. Yeah. Despite the broken parts and the looming deadline, the team was thrilled. There were a lot of cheers and high fives going around yeah. after that. Yeah, we were pretty excited because it was really that culmination of a lot of hard work. But there was more hard work to be done. Crankshaft quality control was just one of the issues. It started on fire every time we started it on acetylene. When you were running it, it'd start on fire and it'd backfire and start on fire. 
including one particularly dramatic example in Newport, Indiana, with Carl, who remained remarkably calm in the driver's seat. Well, I, I, I wasn't feeling the fire. He I, wasn't I, the one I back there pulling the flywheels trying to suck the yeah, fire back I, I, in. I was, uh, you know, I, I didn't see any pressing need to leave at that point. I thought maybe because he was pulling on it, I thought the thing might start up and then I was gonna need to drive it. The risk of explosion was pretty low, I think. But just high enough that a change was in order. Additional research led the team to believe that coal gas, commonly available at the time, was a likely fuel for how. And it's a very close chemical relative of propane. So the car today, we run on propane. We tested it on acetylene and quickly uh, abandoned that for yeah, a whole bunch of reasons. Yeah, we proved we could run it on acetylene. We, we could. Actually, toyed with the idea of building our own acetylene generator to But when you work through it, the gas. number of bad ideas that accumulate when you do that. Um, yeah, we were, we were starting we, to rationalize some pretty bad ideas yeah, there so. at some point. That's why we switched to propane and instantly had a, an engine that we could readily come out and start it and get it to run and then start working on making the engine run better. We probably have the tooling now to be able to start production on the Howe yeah. car, but I don't think that we can compete yeah. with Musk or anybody like that. Right. No, I don't think we're a threat to any. No, probably not. Even Howe, who later purchased several automobiles, knew that his original design probably wasn't right for the market. Even though I think he was a fairly wealthy person for that time period, I think he also was smart enough to realize after he'd done it I don't have the money or the, the stomach for this. And uh, a lot of people tried and went bankrupt and didn't do as well as he did. Maybe his wife just wanted the space back in the garage. Uh, well, too. yeah, <laughs> that, that too, yeah.